Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic again. I've got another video and topic I want to discuss with you today. Now we're going to be talking about something that's pretty much on every make and model vehicle on the road today. And that item's called a clock spring. Uh, I'm going to go in detail about what one is, and we're also going to take one apart and see what the internal workings are. So definitely check it out. Alright, so let's take a moment to talk about what a clock spring is. Clock spring is basically the electrical connection between everything below the steering wheel and everything above the steering wheel. Back in the day, uh, about the only connection you ever had to have in the steering wheel was for your horn. It's just a single circuit. Uh, once they started introducing airbags, it started getting a little more complicated. We started having anywhere from two to four wires for an airbag. And then also we had to have more convenience items. We had to have steering wheel controls for our radios. Some have cruise controls. Uh, of course the horns integrated into it now. So now you've got went from one wire to a combination of possibly 10 or more sometimes. So there's got to be a connection from the bottom of the column up and also to everything in the steering wheel. Now keep in mind everything in the steering wheel has the ability to rotate. So, the connection between the stationary column and the steering, rotating steering wheel, there has to be a mechanism. And that's where a clock spring comes in. Most clock springs have a circuit board uh, as a portion of it and then also uh, a ribbon. The ribbon inside is actually a circuit. Uh, it could be anywhere depending on how many wires is part of that circuit. And it's spooled up inside. For example, this one right here, I've taken it apart already had about eight feet of ribbon inside. And that was for the connection between the pins here and these here. That's what that ribbon was for. So you had to have something on the stationary side to the rotating side. And that's how that works. Now, problems you can have, usually it's the older models, but you still see them from time to time. You may have an airbag, anything that's related to the steering wheel now. You may have an airbag related code. You may have anything from the menu buttons to the cruise control if it has it to everything from the horn not working so if you do have those issues now if you have all those issues you can almost rule that it's going to be the clock spring now if you have separate issues you'd have to go and narrow it down one by one but usually a clock spring will cause all the above to have a problem because at that point something has broke internally and come apart uh, there's some rare instances however where you can have one circuit affected and not others but that's why it's imperative that you put the clock spring on in its rest position because if it's rotated too far one way and installed, now the ribbon inside is bound up. So if you make a sharp turn one way or the other, you could snap the internal mechanism inside. That's why it has to be at the rest position. And usually brand new, they come locked in place. In the rest position, they'll have some kind of plastic keeper or something to keep it in place so that you do not do that. Now, if you are working on a steering column, and you've got it disconnected from the rack. Uh, do something with the steering wheel. Get your ratchet strap, bungee cord, anything, and tie it down to where it doesn't rotate. Because if someone gets in there and spins it, you're basically doing the exact same thing. You're no longer in the rest position. It doesn't matter if it's straight up anymore. You can be out anywhere from 360, 720, that many number of degrees, and the steering wheel will be straight, but inside that eight feet of ribbon is now in a tight, bound up assembly so now something's going to break so definitely if you're dealing with a steering column steering wheel whatever out of the vehicle in the vehicle if anything on the steering is disconnected make sure the steering wheel is not free to rotate you can have a little movement one way or another as long as you remember where it went put it back up but definitely do something to keep it in place so here's our clock spring now it's no longer in the vehicle so it can spin freely which is what you usually don't want because you want it to stay in a happy point. There's a happy point where everything's wound up inside to where it's at rest so you can turn so far to the right and so far to the left and not cause any damage. Now you sit here and do this number, you're going to cause problems especially if you were to put it back on now because now when you went to make a sharp turn to the left you'd probably snap whatever's internal. So it, it has a springiness to it but you can only go so far one way start causing problems just like that little snap we just heard so what we're going to do is we're going to do worst case scenario we're going to self-destruct this we're going to take this thing apart we're going to look at the internals there you go 
That's what the internals of a clock spring are. It's a ribbon. And if you go too far in one direction, you're gonna snap the ribbon. You're gonna break it loose from its circuit inside. These wires go in on this side, come out here, and they are part of this ribbon. The ribbon's basically a circuit board. It goes all the way up inside. That's a clock spring. So now you know what a clock spring is. It's not something inside of a watch that you wind up by any means. And it's definitely, like I said, on every vehicle you see on the road today, based on the fact that there's so much electronics and so many convenience items added to a car that multiple things take on multiple roles. That's basically what a clock spring is. So, definitely take precaution when you're working around one. The two most important things is if you're doing any kind of steering wheel, steering column related repairs that's going to involve touching or removing that clock spring, make sure your steering wheel is dead straight up and also make sure that the wheels are pointed straight forward. If you do follow those two steps, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Nonetheless, at this point, I ask for any kind of thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget to like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter and you can check me out on Instagram. If you got any kind of comments or suggestions about today's video or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram, you can always email me at david at MotorCityMechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. In the meantime, thank you as always for watching these videos.